I'm here. Sorry. Just trying to get things going again. It just it gets really slow and then it just kicks me out, so I had to restart everything. You didn't miss anything, Sherry. I just had to turn everything off and then restart a new stream. So that sometimes that takes me a minute. So everybody else should start coming back in if they want to continue. So can you hear me okay now? Okay, so what I was saying is this middle piece is part of the butterfly. So when I clip this out, I just have to make sure I get enough glue inside there to actually hold the but but the body of the butterfly in. So I'm going to clip the hook part off. And this is pretty soft plastic, so it's not easy to clip. You have to work at it a bit. I'm just going to hold this in here with my finger. Whatever parts you miss, you can go back and rewatch. You really didn't miss anything important, though. Like, as if any of this is really important. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to... Oh, before I do that, I have to add my little ribbon strings. So I just cut three pieces of ribbon about the same length. Nothing too technical. I'm going to put a dab of glue in the center here and glue these. I did one straight and then I did one cattywampus that way and one cattywampus this way. Okay, now I'm going to take my butterfly. I'm going to squeeze a good bit of glue in there just because I want it to get inside of the butterfly to hold his body in place. Try not to burn myself. I'm going to have to lift his wings up onto his body and hold it until the glue has a chance to set. Since I clipped the hook off for the button part, Make sure that that's all connected really well. Okay, now I'm going to find a B in my letters, which there happens to be a purple B right here. I'm going to take two of my little pearls and I'm going to stick some glue on the side here. that one that one just stick it in the middle And then I'm going to take these and seal the edges of my ribbon just so it doesn't fray. And there's Brooks. For these guys, I think I will. Oh, I wish my nose would quit running. Take a couple of different ribbons.
maybe two of those. Two of those. I'm just going to layer these on here. Ow. I really don't like glue guns. I'm going to have to clip this one off. Probably half of her face is going to fall off. There's a bee. I don't think there's very many H's in this little mix. Oh, it's going to make me dump it out, I have a feeling. Oh, no, here's the one. Okay, so for this one, we'll just do the same thing. Layer these. So these are just kind of silly little kid things. Nothing technical. For Haley, I think I'm going to put her H. Well, I was going to put it where that little wand is, but I think it would just cover too much up. So I'm, whoops, stuck it on her crown. Now my glue's dry by that time. So let me try this again. Try to get it in that little nudgy. H and then my B I'm not worried about the strings because I can get those off with the heat gun I don't think I'm going to add any more to it because at this point I'm pretty much just done with it. You know what I'm saying? I 
I get to that point, you know, where it's just like, okay, I'm done with this project. I've spent this much time on it. I'm just done. Did I seal these edges? I don't think I did. I don't know. Okay, so there. That's fancy enough for them. They, oh, I was going to add these. That's right. I was going to add these to the butterflies. I still can. Where, though? Do I need to? I don't know. I don't think I need to because I don't think that they'll fit anywhere. Um, I think I'm going to use these to keep my journals open when I paint it. Good idea, Kayla. Yeah, they look good. So these are Haley's. And these are Brooks. And then I'll, I'll just add the magnets. I have to look for my magnets. I'm not quite sure where I put them. But I'll add the magnets onto them. And yeah, they'll have cute little... They'll want to hang their art on them. Which is what I wanted. You know, kids have to want to add it. They have to, they have to like it. Be excited about it, you know. And so, and I always like to have something when they come home to be excited about. And they usually are looking for it. It's like, oh, what did Grandma get us? Ooh, what did Grandma bought, make us? That kind of thing. So they'll be, this is what, they'll, they'll come home looking for something and this will be their little surprise. Whether it's something I get them at the Dollar Tree or I make them a little something, even if it's a note, they always come home looking for something. Because when you're raising your grandkids, that excitement gets taken away from being a grandparent. The excitement is going with their mom. Coming home to grandma isn't exciting. So I try to have something exciting for them to come home to. So this will be their exciting thing. And since we're starting a new school year, this will be exciting. So yeah, I think they're cute, you know? Little art clips. All right. So for the grown up ones, I'm gonna put these aside. How long have we been here? We've been here for, so we have like 15 minutes. So these two, these other two, I'll save for something else that I sprayed. And then for the denim ones, so I just want to do a couple of the painted white ones, I think. So I just wanted to show you all how I just stress them really quick. You can use um, a emery board, a file, a fingernail file, or you, I don't have a fingernail file that I want to use. Usually I use one of my old raggedy ones that I'm about done with. But this is some 220 sandpaper, and I'm just going to get like the edges, you know, where you would see normal wear, the tops where you would see normal wear, the edges. Just kind of give that weird look on them. You don't have to do a whole lot to them, just give them a fast, a fast rub. You could decorate these with washi tape. You know, if you've got some washi tape that you really like. Some scrapbook paper. If you probably have, if you're like me, you have tons of scraps. If you don't like the paper on the metal, which that doesn't bother me at all, it comes off really easy. You can either scrape it off with the sandpaper, or your finger, it comes off really easy. It doesn't bother me to have it on there, but if it does bother you, then pick it off. But wherever you know there would normally be wear on something that was painted, just give it a quick sand. And you don't have to do this part. I 
I just like the way it looks. See, so, yeah, I like that, that way it looks kind of worn. You don't really even have to do both sides. You can just do one side because if you're going to make these into magnets, you're only going to see one side of it. You can cut your paper to fit on this exactly, or you can just use strips. To me, it doesn't even matter if it's even, um, but some people just go ahead and cut their strips of paper and it covers the whole front. How, whatever you want it to look like. I've seen people put little dangles on here with some... Um, eye rings, you know, jewelry eye rings, but honestly, I've tried to get a hole in there. Um, and every time I try it, I crack it. I crack the wood. So I don't know if they're using like a Dremel tool to drill the hole. But every time I try to, to cut the hole, I end up cracking my wood. So I don't know how they're getting the holes in there. They do like a project share, but they don't really show you how they get the hole in there. I have one more, I might as well do it. You don't have chalk paint, just use acrylic paint. It does that's what I did on my other ones and it sands the same way. You can get the same look on the acrylic paint. I just needed to use I need to use up this chalk paint before it goes bad. dust. So the, they look cute just like this if you just wanted to leave them like this and not do any more with them. You could paint on them if you wanted to. You could even use just Sharpie markers on here. I've seen people just write, you know, things on the sides of them with markers. Um, you could use rub-ons if you wanted. If you don't like your handwriting, you could use rub-ons. <coughs> stamps. You could do stamps on them. Um, do I have, I don't think I have, like stays on ink would be good on this. I'm looking at, I, all of my stamps are in a tub up on my shelf, so I was just looking, sometimes I keep some down here <coughs> when I'm too lazy to put them up. Excuse me. <coughs> you can Mod Podge paper, book paper. Tiny birds.
I mean, seriously, you could, you could do anything. It's endless what you could do to these endless possibilities. I have my little scrap bin here. Um, just wondering, is there any paper in here that I just absolutely love? There is, but in a small form. Is there anything that I just love? There's a lot that I love. Like my painted papers. Look how cute this will look on here. Or my stamped paper. This is actually jelly print paper that then I went back and I stamped on it. So if I wanted to just cut some of this, I'm not even cutting this straight. So like, I like it to not fit completely because I like to have my worn edges peek out. Okay. So I would just size it up like I wanted it. Take my glue. Get a good layer on there. These make really, these sell really good at craft fairs too. Like, do up a bundle of four or five of these. Package them up really nice. And sell them for like four dollars. You're selling them for a dollar a piece. And they sell. They really do. People really do buy them. Anything that you can make and sell for under $5 at craft fairs, people go nuts over them because they, they're a cheap gift. They're a cheap, nice gift. And anything for under $5, people, you know, will buy because they can, for one thing, like if they work, they can sell them or they can buy them and give them as gifts to their coworkers, to family members, and stocking stuffers. That's what people are always thinking in their mind. Gifts under $5 sell really good. Okay, so see, just with a scrap of paper, and to not even put an embellishment on this, look how cute that is. I just go the wrong way. And it looks so cute. It's so cute. And then I could still add a tiny word on there if I wanted. I don't have any tiny words on me right now. They're all in, in hiding. No, they're just put up. I don't know where they're at. That's the problem I have is I never know where anything is at. Yeah, so that's cute. I like that one. Or this one. This is some stamped paper that I made. And you could, you know, if you were making like a whole bunch of these at once, take your piece of paper, put your glue, stick it down, and then you could cut the edges. Of course, you're not going to see your edges of it. But um, if you were mass producing them, you could come up with a system to mass produce them in a quicker way than this. You could go over your whole paper clip like this and not have that part show, but personally, I like that part to show, so. I like to have that little metal piece show in there. It makes me happy. So I just size it up. No measuring. You guys know me. I don't particularly like to measure anything if I don't have to with a ruler anyways stick 
this on here. And you can add things to the outside of this if you wanted to. Personally, I like them to be simple. Especially if you're putting them on your refrigerator because the more you use them, the more that fancy stuff's going to be coming off of it. And your pattern paper looks really cool. And you don't even have to get out new sheets of paper. Just get out your scrap bin. That's all this is, is just scrap bin. I like to use my homemade papers, but I like to use my homemade papers for a lot of things. So let's see how good that looks. So we made two of them. I think they're cute. You And another thing you can also do is say, I wanted more color, or let's even do black, because black just brings out everything. We'll just do this one. So if I wanted to just black out, you know, black these edges, Black does. Black just brings out every other color. You can do that too. Or you can do a color, a colored um, ink around the edges. And there's so much you can do with these possibilities are endless just go with your whatever is in your head your only obstacle is your own mind that's the one thing don't ever try to recreate something that somebody else has done because the ideas you, you are if you are going to try to recreate exactly what somebody else has done you are limiting yourself you can take those ideas, like you can take my ideas, but please don't try to copy me. Expand on what I have done. Don't try to make what I have done um, to the T. Just take my ideas and expand on them. Um, like what, I think I watched a video of some lady that did the gesso thing and the spray. But hers did not come out anything like this. I don't even remember what she did. The only thing that caught my attention is, oh wow, she used a ge she used gesso and spray to cover her clothespins. I don't even know what else she did with it because that's what stuck in my mind. And I thought, I'm gonna try that. I don't even know what else she did to her clothespins. So I took that idea and I just wanted to try it. And it worked, I like it. So, um, you're only limited by your own mind. When you see somebody try, you know, create something, don't try to mimic what they've done. Just take their idea and then create off of that. That's one thing that um, limits people. Because then they're like, ooh, I want to create that exact same thing. No, you can't do that. That's not possible. It is possible, but you'll only frustrate yourself. Okay. From Greece. Wow, you're far away from me. So I hope that that was enjoyable, you guys. I hope that... Um, you guys will try some of these ideas. They're so fun to make. And like I said, it's amazing how you can take a simple clothespin and do so much with it. 
just like any, <coughs> excuse me, just like anything. <coughs> How you can take just a simple item and create so much out of it. And this is actually a really good project to get kids involved because um, you can use markers, you can use watercolors, you can get just get so much, so many different supplies. And it's cheap, you know, so it's not like you're buying your kids expensive, an expensive base to start off with. Who cares if they color a, a clothespin all black? <laughs> It's just, you know, a penny item. So you guys have any questions? For me. I love these. Thank you, Arte. Arte. Hi, f hi, New York. Craft free joy. Well, I, I, we're about done, you guys, but if you've got any questions at all for me um, about Faith Art Unedited, our new art journal group, um, I did post in there our first stepping stone. I'm going to call each entry a stepping stone. And our first one is posted in the group. My name is Kimberly. Is it all right if I post mine in the journal group or are we keeping that strictly journals? Po posting your what in there? Your paper, your clothespins, Kayla. Thank you. I love the clothespins too. Hi, Elise. You should be getting your package. I mailed it on Thursday. Hi, is it Arte? Art in house. Art in the house. Um, Kayla, why don't, why don't you post? It would probably be better if you post your clothespins on my community Facebook page. Have you liked my community Facebook page? Do you know how to get there? More people will see it there, Kayla. Let me post that for you, sweetie. I'm sorry it, it took me a while, Kayla. My sickness kind of got in the way of my posting. Or Annalise. Post it there, Kayla. Thank you, Teresa. Argentina. Wow, there's just people from all over the place. Wow. That's amazing. Well, welcome. Greece. You're welcome, Kayla. Thank you so much for arting with me today. 
I'm so glad that you did that. I can't wait to see your clothespins. How exciting. I love it when you guys art with me. Thank you, Elise. I can't wait until you get the flowers. You'll have to show me what you use them on, Elise. I can't stop using them. I just love those little flowers. So if you guys want to join our art journaling group, it's called Faith Art Unedited. Let me give you a link. Our first um, stepping stone or art journal entry is going to be on the 21st and I have posted in the group the prompts for that so once you join the group you'll be able to see those prompts and I have just posted that group so please join ATC Trades, they have opened that up internationally. So if you want to join the Facebook group where I trade ATCs, I will now post the link to that Facebook group. We would love to have you join us. There is that link there. I know it says USA, but they have opened that up to international trades as long as both parties agree to the shipping costs, then um, trades are welcome. You're welcome, Pat. It was nice chatting with you, and um, I'll be here every Saturday at 1 next week I don't I think maybe next week we'll do jelly prints if that's okay with everybody to get out the jelly plate and do some jelly printing haha <laughs> there's really no secret behind the moustache. Thank you, ex Risa. That's so nice of you, thank you. I like using those to dry my paint pages. Jelly printing is um, basically mono printing. A jelly plate is um, made from gelatin and you squirt different paints on top of it and then you capture the um, image onto um, different kinds of paper. Um, it pulls the paint off of the jelly plate. It's called a jelly plate. It's made out of gelatin. You pull the paint off and you get a mono print. It's really fun. Very fun and addicting. Ooh yeah Kayla, make your plate. It's very fun, Pat. So join us next week and we will do some jelly printing. I'll actually move my camera set up over to my big table 
and I'll set up over there because I just don't really have enough room on this table. Krissa. Krissa. Oh, I get it. Okay, Krissa. Okay, Elise, that sounds great. I would love, love to see him. Well, you need a jelly plate, um, Pat, and you can make your own. Let me find... Pink Poodle Crafts has a good recipe for a jelly plate. Let me see if I can pull up her recipe really quick. I have to find her video, so give me a second here. There, you can buy them. Um, but they're kind of expensive. So that that's definitely an option, Pat. If you want to order one online, you can definitely do that. Um, or you can make one yourself. So that's up to you. Let me pop this in. This is the recipe that I followed for mine. Right there. Or you can buy one. And you, they come in different sizes when you purchase them. So um, it would just, you know, be up to you what size you would want to buy. So here, this is a 8 by 10. And then you can, you know, get smaller ones if you want to. But here's one on Amazon. You may want to shop around for an 8x10. So hopefully that will help. And then you'll need some acrylic paints. The cheap ones are fine. Um, you can use copy paper. You can use index cards. You'll need a brayer. And um, that, some stencils if you have them. Just some basic shape foam stamps. I make my own. <coughs> this is the stuff that I use for my jelly printing. These are just like some household things that I've collected. Like this is a little spongy thing that I got out of some packaging. That's my phone, so just let it ring through. So these are just some um, kids' foams that I layered on here and put on cardboard. So I use these, um, just household kind of um, rolls, lids, different plastic lids, milk carton lid, a Snapple lid, um, beer caps tape dispenser cap, Spent, this is an old marker cap, I use these in paint, in paint when I paint too, um, like a sun block cap, one of those ice cream, um, or a haagen stick, ice cream stick, just, you know, a bunch of different household type things. 
And then I've got, these are again some, these are stars that I cut out on my Cricut of that fun foam stuff and I glued it onto cardboard. These are paper stencils which you can get fairly cheap. Um, these are some, I think, Heidi Swap. Um, I've made all kinds of these fun foam stamps. I've got all kinds of these cardboard stencils. Another homemade stamp. Flowers. Yeah, so I mean, I've got just tons of these little fun foam. And you can buy these shapes already cut out in the kids section. And then I just double them up. See, there's two layers of them on here. And I just stick them onto cardboard and make different stamps. I use these when I'm painting as well. But there's like, these ones were buttons that I stuck down. Some crosses, like some of these I haven't even used. There's some more flowers some dots, just different shapes. Some more stars. So you don't have to spend a lot of money. You can pretty much just use things that you've got around your house. Um, make things. This is like a bag something came in. I don't know if it was an art supply, but like what oranges come in, you know, that netting. Bubble wrap is good. What else do I have? I just have a very, very cheap brayer that these pins come out on me all the time. You'll see when I'm jelly printing, my pins will come out and I'll have to stop and put them back in. But this is a brayer. You need that to spread your paint. Um, I have a chopstick that I like to draw with. Popsicle sticks work great. Um, yeah, so just, you know, stuff that you have around the house. Paint, acrylic paint you definitely need. And again, just buy the cheap stuff. You don't, you know, like seriously, the cheapest paint you can find. You're welcome, Pat. Any other questions, you guys? Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I had a really fun time making these. And I hope that those of you that didn't make them try to do this, not try, I mean it's so easy. Um, it's fun. So I will probably do my um, art journaling page. I will try to have it posted like Wednesday, Wednesday night. And then um, everybody, if they could post theirs in the group. Well, you'll have a week to post it. You know, if we do it once a week, I don't know. We really haven't thought, thought that through. 
I would kind of like to do it every two weeks. What are your thoughts on that? And, I, and I'll post this question in the group as well, but I don't want people to feel rushed through it. I would like to really give the prompt and then give people a couple of weeks to really think about it and to put a lot of thought in it and not feel rushed. I think that two a month is plenty. I don't really think that we need to do one a week. I think that one every two weeks is enough. What are your thoughts on that, you guys? Because the weeks go by so fast that I just don't want people to feel rushed through it. I really want this to be a journey with that people can get something out of it and not feel rushed through it. So I'm leaning towards every two weeks to a month. And so it's not like you'll have to have your art journal done on the 21st no yeah I think so too Teresa I think that every two weeks because you know before before you know it seven days has passed and then it's so easy to get behind it's so much easier if you do get behind to get caught up if you get behind and then once you get behind, you're like, why even bother? So I think, I think that I'm going to suggest that we do every two weeks. It's more feasible in my mind anyways. But I'm going to work on a calendar and um, work it out that way. So I'll try to get my, my page done um, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday, like four days prior to the due prompt. I'll try to have it posted four days to the due prompt. And then you'll actually have, you know, that time to work on it before the next one. So I think that that will work out well. Of course, there's not like a due date or anything, but. All right, well, if you guys don't have any more questions, I think that I am going to go take a nap. <laughs> clean up and go take a nap. I got to get those naps in while I can. Okay, you go get some rest. Good night. Okay, you guys will. <coughs> well, you go to bed too then. <coughs> Excuse me.
Wow, it's 10. Oh, yeah, you're in the UK. Thank you, Elise. I will. I'm going to go take a nap. Clean up and nap. Take a little siesta. You're welcome, Elise. Thank you for joining me. <coughs> Bye, everybody. God bless. Have a good rest of your weekend. Yeah, next Saturday, Teresa, same time, we'll do um, mono printing on the jelly plate. Okay, everybody, I'm going to sign off. You're welcome, Kayla. I enjoyed it as well. I'm looking forward to Saturday. Bye-bye, Elise. Bye-bye, <coughs> everybody. God bless.